Case this time around, you know, I don't care about earnings and cents per share and that. I want to talk about the strategic success of Carlsberg versus the beleaguered outcomes at your competitors. Heineken, and particularly the people that bought St. Louis, InBev, AB, whatever the conglomerate is called. What are your beer best practices that they're not doing? Well, good morning here from uh, Copenhagen. And uh, well, frankly, indeed, we delivered a strong third quarter. Um, well, our international premium brands like Carlsberg and Tuborg uh, showed good growth. Uh, and another strategic priority like <coughs> alcohol-free brews and um, the, our craft and specialty brews <coughs> grew uh, very well. So I think what we do is basically say what we've promised, that we focus on some right. very strategic uh, parts of our category uh, and deliver. Case, okay, so we've got an election coming up in America, 1758. George Washington, as a young buck, decides to give out 46 gallons of free beer. And in America, we've got this phrase, if I'm elected, free beer. You can't make money on free beer, can you? Do you just give away the low price beer market? No, not at all. Um, but uh, to your point, um, we can't give away <laughs> free beer, whatever the, uh, the focus on the election is. Uh, so we, we try to really give um, a good value for money proposition, whether it's a craft, a specialty, our Carlsberg or Tuborg brand or an alcohol-free beer. Uh, all right. Away from free beer, uh, Mr. Hart, so what's momentum looking like in the fourth quarter? So third quarter, it was also helped by better weather. People go out, they drink, they enjoy a beverage of their choice. Can you keep the momentum for the fourth quarter and beyond? Well, normally the, the second and the third quarter uh, in our regions are the most strong and most important quarter. So we're really satisfied with a very strong uh, quarter three. Quarter four is less important uh, because uh, we're moving into the winter. Um, and uh, obviously we have been helped by a very good summer in Europe uh, in quarter three. Um, talk to me a little bit about cannabis. Does it pose a threat to, to big beer like craft beer used to? Well, we are uh, not having uh, an, an, an important footprint in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, that's where cannabis is the theme. Obviously, we monitor the developments, but we are not working yet uh, on an extension uh, in beer uh, based on cannabis. Cesar, I want to get back to the strategy of beer making. We've seen IBM Red Hat. We've seen Case. We've seen General Electric go down in flames over the last couple of days. How do you deploy strategic capital in the beer business? I mentioned Heineken struggling, InBev struggling. How do you do that without screwing it up? Well, what we've seen uh, when, we set out our when we set out our strategy is that millennials are very much focused on uh, uh, other kinds and other types of drinks, including alcohol-free drinks, uh, and we focused uh, on that. Um, on the other hand, uh, when they drink, they want to have a very good brew and are willing to pay for that, and we focus on that right. as well. Uh, and the combination of that, including um, well, an, a focus on big cities in, in China and the country right. India, uh, leads us to growth.